Hello, we're doing AAT notes. This is section 1.7. We're graphing systems of linear inequalities. And when you see that you're graphing inequalities, that means you're going to shade in some way. So we've already graphed inequalities where we shaded the area. Here we're graphing multiple inequalities and we've got to shade the areas they have in common, their intersection. When graphing systems of inequalities, shade only the region that is true for all parts is what we're looking for of the system. So we're going to first graph these all like they're lines. y equals 4, x equals negative 2, and y equals 2x plus 1. So y equals 4 is a hoi, a horizontal line with a zero slope, and y equals some number. So we're going to go up and find where y equals 4. If you know it's a horizontal line ahead of time, it's going to be easier. Make sure this is a solid line. Remember, if it's equal to, it's a dotted line. When it's not equal to, you might want to kind of Write that down before you start so you'll remember. So we're doing a solid line where x equals 4, and we should always use some kind of straight edge. Excuse me, where y equals 4. So there's that one. Then the next one, x is greater than negative 2. It's a vertical line, undefined sloped, because x equals number. It's a vertical line where x is negative 2, right here. We'll grow green with this one. And this one should be a dotted line because it's not equal to, so I'm doing a dotted line here. And then the last one, y is greater than 2x plus 1. So this is y equals mx plus b. So there's our m, there's our b. So our b is at 1. We're going to rise to run 1, rise to run 1. This is a solid line because it is equal to. I'll get that one in there. All right, so where do we shade? So we got to look at each line individually. So first one, y is less than 4. Remember, when we figured out where to shade, we plugged in a point like 0, 0 is usually the easiest. So if I plug in 0, 0, it'd be is 0 less than 4. Yes, 0 is less than 4. And y is less than, it makes sense I'm going to shade below that line. So some people like to go ahead and shade that whole thing, but I think it gets a little messy. So I just draw little arrows and know so far I'm shading down below that purple line. Then the Next line, the green line, is x is greater than negative 2. If I plug in 0, 0, 0 greater than negative 2? Well, yeah, 0 is greater than negative 2. So I am going to look at that line and shade where 0, 0 is in relation to that line, which is on this side of that line. There's 0, 0. It makes sense because I'm saying x is greater than negative 2. So, so far I've shaded below the purple to the right of the green, so I'm in this area over here. But the last one, so this red line, if we plug in 0, 0, I get 0 is greater than or equal to 2 times 0 plus 1, which is 0 is greater than or equal to 1. 0 is not greater than 1. Nope. So I'm going to shade the opposite direction for where 0, 0 is. So let me make it real easy to see this blue dot here. There's 0, 0. So if I'm shading the opposite side of the, side of the red line, I'm shading this direction. OK, so now I want to see what they have in common. So below the purple line, to the right of the green line, above the red line, appears to me to be right in this little triangle here. Let me shade it real well. That's the solution. And I can check it by taking any point in that in that triangle will work for all three equations. That's a good way to check. Okay, here, write a system of equations whose so solution is graphed. So this is the opposite. We're going to write the equations here. So I'm going to start with this nice, easy vertical line 
because this is a vertical line, undefined slope. So it is x equals a number. And I got 1, 2, 3, 4. So x equals 4. And I know it's going to equal because it's a solid line. But I don't, I'm not going to, sometimes I can't easily see if it's a less than or a greater than. This is less than. The shaded area is here. And that is below the line. So I know it's going to be less than or equal to. I can also, again, take 0, 0 and plug it in. 0 is on this side of the line. 0 is less than 4. So I'm going to shade less than that line. Okay, so let's look at this dotted line here. The dotted line isn't going to have an equal, so it's going to be greater than or less than. It appears that it's crossing at 1, 2, 3. So if we put it in y equals mx plus b, and I'm not going to put equals yet because it's not actually going to equal, looks like my b is 3. I need my slope. So it looks like another good point would be right here. Rise 1, run 2. So my slope's 1 half. So there's my line, y equals 1 half x plus 3, but not equal to. I need to see if it's greater than or less than. Well, I can already kind of see it's going to be less than because it's below the line. Or I can take the point 0, 0. 0 compared to 1 half times 0 plus 3. This is 3. 0 is less than 3. <coughs> So I'm going to end up making this a less than expression. <coughs> okay, so there's one equation for the vertical line. There's the second one for the dotted line. So now I need the third one. So for that third line, look at the y-intercept is 0. So if I put it, it y equals mx plus b. Since the y-intercept is 0, that's what's there, and I'm rising to, running back to. So if I rise to, go back to, that's negative, then that slope would be negative 1. So that's negative 1x. And then I can't plug in 0, 0 when it actually crosses on 0, 0. So I either need to pick another point, or again I can see that it, I'm shading above the line, so it looks to be a greater than. But let's check it. I think it's a greater than or equal to. Equal to because it's solid. But let's pick another point. I'm going to pick this point right here. That's the point 1, 1. And I'm going to plug in 1, 1. And I'd get 1 is greater than or equal to negative 1 times 1. Well, 1 is greater than or equal to negative 1. So I am correct that it's a greater than. So there's my third equation. Don't really like it without being simplified, so I'm going to say that's y is greater than or equal to negative x. Looks a lot better than that, putting that negative 1 and the 0 in. Okay, so flip it on over. Graph the feasible region for each of the constraints. So same thing, we're graphing all of these. This is in standard form, because you got the x, the y, and then your a, b, and c. So standard form, the slope is negative a over b, which is negative 1 over 1, or negative 1. But even easier, the x-intercept is 9, 9, 0. And the y-intercept is 9. These are two different points, not the same point. So if I plot the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, and 9, 0 on the y, that's going to be my line. It's a solid line because it's equal. So there it is. If I plug in 0, 0, I get 0 plus 0 is less than 9, which is true. So I'm going to shade this where 0, 0 is, which is below that line. So, so far, I've got this shaded. Got to kind of keep that in my mind. The next line, we're going to go, if you have colors when you're doing your notes, 
that kind of helps out when you're doing all these lines. So on this one, this again is a solid line. The y-intercept, if I plug in 0 for x, the y-intercept is negative 5. So 0, negative 5. The x-intercept is 5 over 2. Don't really like that. So I'm going to use the slope, which is negative a over b. Negative 2 over b, negative 1, which is 2. So start at the y-intercept of negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm going to rise to run 1, rise to run 1, and so forth. This was a solid line, so I can go ahead and make that solid line. Now be careful. Some people see that less than, and they say, oh, I'm just shading below the line. But this is a negative y is less than. So this inequality would act, would actually flip. So I would plug in that 0, 0 to check. If I plug in 0, 0, I get 0 times 2 is 0. Minus 0 is less than 5. Well, 0 is less than 5, so that's true. So I'm actually shading above this line where 0, 0 is located in relation to that line. So, so far I've shaded this area over here. X is greater than 0, so this is a vertical line undefined sloped with X equals number. So X equals 0 is here. I should know it's a vertical line. It's a, I'm go all the way up here, it's a solid line right along the Y axis because that's where X is always 0. X is 0, X is 0, X is 0, all the way there. So I'm shading greater than that, which I know x's are going greater that way. So I got that one. And then y is greater than 0. So our y line, what color can I use? How about green? y is a horizontal line, 0 slope, y equals a number. So horizontal slope where y is always 0, y 0, y 0, y 0. And it's greater than, so I'm shading above. Now I need to see what all these little arrows have in common. So above the green line, below the red line, to the right of the blue line, and above the purple line, looks like I'm right in here. Where do I stop? I've got to be above the green line, so right in there. Nice. Last one. Why don't you see if you can graph this last one. So pause here for a second, and then we'll come back and check it. Okay, so here is your last one. I got the y-intercept for the first line was negative 4, and the x-intercept was 6, and that gave me the red line, solid, because it's equal to. The second one, the x-intercept was 20, um, which is way down here off the graph, so don't actually graph that. The y-intercept is 4, and then I use the slope, negative a over b, to get that second point. So the blue line is the second line, solid, because it's equal to. And then here, this is in y equals mx plus b, just our b is 0, there's nothing added. And so we start at 0, we could use the slope, rise 3, run 1. It's dotted, because it's not equal to. And so we plug in 0, 0 on all of them except for this one. If it crosses 0, 0, don't plug in 0, 0. On this one, I might pick another point, like an easy point, like this point right here is 1, 0. So if I plug in 1, 0, I'm getting 0 is less than 3, which is true. And so that's why on that line, I'm shading this way. And that gives me that common shaded area. Good job.